All right, so you wanted to take a deeper look at the death of Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar. Mm. Yeah, the footage, the IDF released, uh, the targeted strikes, and, you know, the aftermath. It's been everywhere. But we're going to do more than just, like, recap the headlines, you know. This is a deep dive into Sinwar's legacy, the strategies at play, and really, like, what this means for the people caught in the middle of this conflict. Yeah, and it's important to understand, I think Sinwar wasn't just a name on a list. This was a man who rose through the ranks of Hamas, right? A group that many consider a terrorist organization. Um, he was directly involved in the capture of an Israeli soldier back in 2006. And his time in Israeli prison seemed to only solidify, I think, his hardline stance. He wasn't just about speeches. This was a guy who was about action. And, and that made him a powerful force, yeah. uh, both feared and to some you know, respected. So he was a significant figure within Hamas. But I'm looking at the IDS statement here, and they're using some pretty strong language, eliminated, uh, talking about him hiding behind civilians. Mm. And they're directly addressing the residents of Gaza. What's the strategy there? Well, I think you have to remember, warfare is as much about psychology as it is about firepower. By addressing the people of Gaza directly, the IDF is trying to separate them from Hamas in a way to portray this as a liberation, not an attack. Now, whether that message resonates, you know, that's a whole other story. It's a complex situation with decades of history, and there's no guarantee how people will interpret these actions. And Netanyahu's speech seemed to echo that sentiment, even saying that Hamas will no longer rule Gaza, hmm. but also acknowledging that, you know, the fight isn't over. Right. And and if you look at it through a, a broader lens, this isn't just about one man. It's part of a larger pattern. Right. I mean, the IDF claims to have taken out over 1,500 Hezbollah operatives, another group with deep ties to Hamas. These targeted strikes going after the heads of these organizations, it's clear strategy. But whether it'll destabilize the entire network or just lead to new leaders emerging, that's the big question. And speaking of big questions, the public reaction to this has been, well, Let's just say there are a lot of strong opinions out there. Yeah. We took a look at some of the online comments, and it's clear this event has really struck a nerve. Yeah, and it's understandable, right? I mean, this conflict is deeply personal for so many people. You've got some praising the IDF, calling Sinwar a terrorist, and celebrating what they see as a victory. Then you have others who are skeptical, worried that this will just lead to more violence, more suffering for the people of Gaza. It's a stark reminder, I think, of how complex this issue is, how difficult it is to find that common ground. Yeah, definitely. And you know what stood out to me was how some people are connecting this to U.S. politics. There's this whole conversation about whether this could have happened under different leadership or whether this changes the dynamics in the region. Absolutely. And that's a crucial point. What happens in this conflict doesn't stay confined to Israel and Gaza. This has ripple effects throughout the Middle East and beyond. You know, you mentioned urban warfare earlier, and essentially what we're talking about is fighting in these densely populated areas yeah. where the lines between combatants and civilians, they become blurred. And the tactics used here, the technology, the strategies they're being watched by militaries and governments around the world. So what's happening now could really shape how conflicts are fought for years to come. It's a sobering thought. So we've got this kind of volatile mix of internal power struggles within Hamas international attention on the tactics being used and, of course, the lives of everyday people caught in the middle. What happens next? What should we be paying attention to? Well, the most immediate question is what happens within Hamas? Will there be a power vacuum, a struggle for control? Or will a clear successor emerge, maybe someone who might take the organization in a different direction? There's also the question of how this impacts the relationship between Hamas and the people of Gaza. Sinwar was a controversial figure, but he was also a powerful one. His absence will undoubtedly be felt. And on a larger scale, what about the international response? Well, we've already seen some world leaders condemning the airstrikes, while others are expressing support for Israel's right to defend itself. The question is whether this escalates tensions further, particularly with Iran, which has ties to both Hamas and Hezbollah. This is a very fluid situation, and any number of factors could tip the scales. Yeah, so much to unpack here, and it feels like we're just scratching the surface. But I think what's really resonating with me is this idea that what happens in Gaza doesn't stay in Gaza. The implications, the strategies, the human costs, it all has this ripple effect that extends far beyond those borders. It's interconnected, absolutely. And, and it's a stark reminder that even in this world, you know, dominated by technology and global communication, these ancient conflicts, these deeply rooted tensions, they haven't gone away. And finding solutions, you know, finding a path towards peace. It's a monumental challenge. Yeah. And something tells me there are no easy answers here. But maybe that's the point of these deep dives, yeah. right? 
to grapple with the complexity, to try to understand the different perspectives, the motivations, the fears that are driving this. Understanding is always the first step, right? And it's not about condoning violence or taking sides. It's about recognizing the humanity of everyone involved. The families in Gaza who are living in fear, the families in Israel who've lost loved ones. This conflict has touched so many lives. And it's easy to get caught up in the headlines, the political rhetoric. But at its core, it's a human tragedy. Well said. And on that note, I want to thank you for joining me on this deep dive. It's been a challenging but crucial conversation. And to you listening, we've covered a lot of ground here, from the life and death of Yahya Sinwar to the potential fallout for Hamas Gaza and the wider region. It's a lot to process, and we haven't even touched on everything. But if you take away anything from this, I hope it's a deeper understanding of just how intricate and far-reaching this conflict truly is. What happens next is uncertain, but by staying informed, by engaging with these difficult issues, we can at least strive for a more informed and empathetic world. Thanks for listening.